Hey guys, happy Wednesday. I hope everybody's doing really well out there today. Uh, today's video is going to be a follow-up or a continuation of uh, Monday's video. Uh, in Monday, we installed uh, Nginx Proxy Manager. And in today's video, we're going to add to that. We're gonna add some functionality and we're going to install NextCloud on a Raspberry Pi 4. So um, this is gonna be real similar to last, uh, the, the Monday video because uh, the, it's a database issue that keeps NextCloud from running on a Raspberry Pi 4 natively. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at how to get that to run on that Raspberry Pi 4. So uh, let's jump over to my desktop real quick and take a look at this. Okay, so here we are on my desktop. This is the uh, hub.docker.com. This is the Docker official image for NextCloud. This is uh, what NextCloud themselves have set up. And uh, if we scroll down about halfway down the page, oops, if we scroll down about halfway down the page, uh, there we go. There is uh, what we're going to use uh, in our uh, in our Portainer setup. We can actually run this in Portainer because it is, as you can see up here, a version two instead of a version three. So we can run this in Portainer and that's what we're gonna do just to make things a little easier than last uh, last Monday. So uh, again, the problem that we run into here is, is this line right here. Uh, this Maria database unfortunately doesn't run on a Raspberry Pi 4 or any of the ARM processors. So we're gonna change that. Um, and that's pretty much the only things we'll have to change. Uh, we will have to change this volume down here uh, and we'll, we'll cover that here in just a moment as well. But before we do any of that, there, there's some preparation stuff we need to do first. Uh, first thing we need to do is make sure that we forward ports 80 and 443 uh, over to our Raspberry Pi so that we get uh, all of our traffic uh, going to that location. Uh, the other thing we need to do is create uh, a domain name or a subdomain in this case. Here we can see that we have got cloud.dbtechyt.com uh, set up. That's what we're gonna use to access our next cloud uh, on the internet. So uh, once we've got those two things, oh, the other thing we need to do, uh, because we're going to be using an SSL through uh, Nginx Proxy Manager, we can actually set the, uh, the SSL TLS encryption uh, from flexible to full. Uh, because we're gonna have an SSL on both sides of everything. So uh, once we've got those three things, uh, we can go ahead and close those three windows. Um, the other thing we need to do in preparation here is actually create a, a volume for all of our files to be stored on. So what we're gonna do is come over here to Open Media Vault. And <clears throat> if we jump into uh, our disks or our file system, either one, we can see that I've got a basically a 256 gig uh, external drive that I plugged in here. Uh, the file system, once that pulls up here, uh, you can see, yep, right here, it's mounted. It's uh, set up as an, X an EXT4 uh, file format. So what we need to do is actually come down to shared folders, create a shared folder, and we'll call this uh, NextCloud. And we're gonna go ahead and give this uh, the device name, the permissions I always set to everybody read and write, and we'll click save. And then um, I don't know that we need to do this, but we're gonna do it anyway. Uh, we're gonna go to SMB CIFS. We're going to enable that and click save. And we'll go to shares. We'll add a share and we'll go ahead and just select that next cloud. And we'll say public needs to be only guests and we'll click save. And then once all that's done, we can go ahead and click apply and say yes. All right, so now that we have that, we can actually jump over to Portainer real quick. So actually first, I'm gonna copy this and I'll go over to Portainer. I'm gonna create a new stack and I'll just paste this in here and uh, I'll give it a name. <clears throat> now again, like I said, we can't use this MariaDB uh, image here. So we're gonna use the same image uh, that we used when we set up Nginx Proxy Manager. And that is the, uh, the Yoba Systems uh, database for the uh, Maria database. We're going to change that. And uh, then, of course, we need to add a password here. Uh, so I'm just going to say password. Of course, you'll want to make this a legit password. Uh, but for the sake of demonstration and setting this up, I'm just going to call this password. And then uh, the next thing I need to do uh, is, is change this volume right here. Uh, because right now this is going to mount to your operating system drive. And if you're doing this, of course, on a Raspberry Pi 4, you may only have 32 or maybe, you know, maybe only uh, 16 gigs of hard drive or of, of micro SD storage. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back over to here to uh, Open Media Vault. We'll go to uh, Shared Folders. And <clears throat> what we need is the absolute path. I don't see it here. So what I'm gonna do is hover over any of these uh, and I'm gonna click the drop down, go to Columns, click absolute path, and then I'm gonna drag this open and I'll right click and say inspect. 
oops, and drag this up. And I'm only doing this step because I'm too lazy to type all of that. So then we can come back over here and change this out like that. So now we've got something moved, or we've got the, 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 the volume. I could have just looked, but I had to let my brain fart. Uh, so we've, we've created a new volume here uh, that's on an external drive. Like I said, it's a 250 gig drive, 256 gig drive. Uh, so now all of our all of our files and everything will be moved there rather to rather than on the SD card. Uh, so once we've got all of this, uh, we're basically good to go. So uh, what we'll do then is we'll click on uh, deploy the stack. And of course, we'll have to give this a minute or two to uh, download, extract and build everything. But we can give that a minute and then we'll come back and take a look. OK, so now we've gone ahead and deployed that. So let's open it up. <clears throat> we can see that we've got uh, our Nextcloud app and our database running. So the next thing I like to do, of course, is look at the logs and make sure everything looks OK there. So then let's grab our URL here and open this up. Oh, of course, that's not going to work because I'm a big old dum dum. So uh, let's actually do uh, 192 and then Two five, and then we'll do eighty eighty. Okay, now I just pulled this up to make sure it's working. Um, we're not going to do anything here just yet. <clears throat> what I need to do though uh, is go to port eighty one, I believe. No, where is it? Uh, it Should have been eighty one. Oh, because it's stopped. Let's go ahead and restart those. Uh, that would uh, that would be why that didn't work. There we go. Now let's go ahead and log in. All right, and we're not gonna save that. Now what we're gonna do is create a new uh, proxy host. We're gonna go ahead and add a proxy host. The domain name, oops, yep, that's right, is cloud.dbtechyt.com. Of course, you'll wanna make that whatever your domain name is. Uh, the scheme is gonna be HTTP. <clears throat> the uh, forward uh, host name and IP is gonna be uh, the IP of address of your uh, Raspberry Pi. And the port in this case is gonna be 8080. Um, and I'm getting that from this published port right here. Now I think it's a good idea to block common exploits. Uh, for the SSL, I will click on the tab there. We'll go to none. We're gonna request a new SSL. We're gonna force an SSL and we're going to request HTTP2 support. And we'll say, I agree. And then we can click on save. And if everything goes well, and I hope it does, uh, we should, uh, this should just work. All right, there we go. <clears throat> so what's cool about this is now I can just click there and here we go. So now we can see that we are on a secured connection here on cloud.dbtechyt.com. So I'm gonna create an admin account. Uh, I'm gonna call this David and I'll give it a password. And then <clears throat> uh, this is actually just fine uh, because we've we have mounted that to a different volume we can leave this data folder alone uh, we are going to change this right here the user is going to be next cloud and then password and then uh, next cloud and then this is going to be db now uh, the reason this is db is actually because uh, if we come into the stack and we go into here we go into the editor, there we go. Uh, the volume here is DB, uh, the service right here is DB, um, the, the volume again is DB. So um, that's where I'm getting that information from. It's because that's what we declared uh, in our stack here. So uh, now that we've got all of that taken care of, uh, you can toggle this on or off if you want to. Uh, I figure if you're gonna install Nextcloud, you may as well get the most out of it. Uh, so now we should be able to just go ahead and click on finish setup. Now, if this was gonna fail, it would have already done it by now. It would have said something like, can't find the database, or of course, something more techy than that. But overall, the message would have been, can't connect to the database, uh, try again, basically. And of course, then it would have reset everything, and it would have just made me mad like it always does when I screw things up. Um, but it looks like everything here is gonna go. So here in a second, uh, this screen should change, and then we'll go into a screen where it's showing uh, the progress of it installing the different applications uh, that we requested it to install. All right, so now, like I said, it's gonna go through and install the uh, the apps that we told it to. 
Um, and of course, this is going to take longer. Um, if you saw my video on how to do this on a, on a regular desktop-ish server, <clears throat> you'll notice that this went really, really fast, uh, comparatively anyway. Uh, you got to remember, again, we're dealing with a quad-core ARM processor, so it's not going to be as powerful as, you know, even a, an, F or an AMD uh, FX8350, 80, yeah, uh, like I've got in my other system. Uh, it's just it's just not. So we're dealing with a lower-powered lower powered system here, so you're just going to kind of have to that you'll just kind of have to hang out and wait for this to complete uh unfortunately that is the downside to using a raspberry pi uh, for this as it is slower so there's more wait time as you're going through this kind of thing all right so there we go now we are in nextcloud everything's been installed uh you can go through this if you want to get a better idea of what's going on with nextcloud but uh, i'll let you do that on your time of course you can get apps for both desktop and your phone uh, or mobile devices rather um, and here is everything uh, up and working um, just like so. Uh, let's uh, let's take a look at the next cloud intro here. Yeah, so there you go. That's playing just fine. So here you can see, oh, <clears throat> so there is one more thing now that I think about it that I do need to change here. Um, so let's go back over, that's uh, safe. All right, so what we need to do here <clears throat> is we actually need to turn uh, the proxy status back on here uh, for a little extra security. So make sure you do that uh, in Cloudflare. Go ahead and turn that back on and click save. Um, and then we wanna jump over here <clears throat> to SSL uh, stuff here, just to make sure that uh, we're forcing an SSL uh, when we're doing this, <clears throat> excuse me. And we are, we're saying always use it, uh, HTTPS, that's good. Uh, you can enable HSTS, uh, probably should have done that before we did the uh, the SSL in Nginx Proxy Manager, uh, but you can do that if you want. Uh, so that should all be good. Uh, so now uh, if we come back over, we can switch this to HTTPS. <clears throat> there we go. Um, so always, it's always a good idea to make sure that your, uh, your URL is HTTPS. Um, but yeah, so here we go. Everything seems to be working. And now you should be able to connect to your uh, next cloud uh, on your Raspberry Pi from uh, literally anywhere as long as you've got uh, an internet connection. Okay guys, so there you go. There's how to set up Nextcloud on a Raspberry Pi, uh, or on a Raspberry Pi 4 more specifically, using Nginx Proxy Manager uh, to secure everything and actually direct traffic the way we would expect it to. So uh, that pretty much wraps up everything we wanted to uh, talk about here. If you've got questions or comments, of course, leave those in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to answer that. Um, I will have all of this. All of this will be available in uh, the, the the blog post linked in the description down below. Of course, you'll want access to all of the information that was here uh, so that you can copy and paste do that sort of thing. Uh, while you're down in the description, there are a couple of links that you should check out if you're interested. Uh, one of them, of course, is a coffee link where you can do a one-time tip if you're interested in doing that. Uh, there's merch down there, but things are still pretty hectic right now. So I don't actually advise merch while this whole COVID thing's going on. Um, and also there is a Patreon. If you want to become a patron, there are a few different levels at which you can subscribe. Uh, I believe two of those levels Two of those levels will give you access to a patrons only Discord server where we can hang out and chat about whatever you'd like to chat about. So with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.